Hey folks, this is Aiming for Gaming. Today we are aiming for all possible reaches in Hydra New Year. This game allows us to use water potential in mining, so without further ado, let's start. First of all, we can modify our appearance. For example, we can add sexy beard, make it even sexier with red color, show our naked torso and... Yeah, this underwear perfectly fits overall style. This game has very nice text boxes, which I can fill in with all my might. Acceptable, please proceed. This is our starting point. Yes, it's small, but it has river, a bridge and, most importantly, it's free. Oh, there are also some initial mining tools for dummies. Baskets, pans, brush and map. I think something is missing here. Ah, yeah, shovel. Now we can start digging. According to this tooltip, there are multiple tires of the shovel. Moreover, the deeper the dig, the better the resources. Sounds promising. Ok, how to dig? Left click. Hmm, the second click produced dirt. And we have even more dirt than we had. Wait, this means only one thing. Time for perspective lesson. And done. You might ask, Andrew, what is this pile of dirt and what about perspective? And I will just go up in this stone and show you all this from a different angle. Perfect. Where was I? Ah, yes, mining. In order to get something valuable, we should first fill pan with water, then put some dirt inside using shovel, clean it with brush, rinse, repeat. Now that we've got our first iron ore, it's about time to sell it. Let's find a place where people accept it. Like this jeweler, for example. I'm not an expert, but this table and big red button silently explain me what to do. One ore on the table, press the button, and ta-da, three Gidra coins. Hmm, a coin and a well. I need to try this. Throwing a penny into a wishing well results in a shoe. Does it know that I am almost naked? Never mind, I can sell it for three Gidra coins and return my money. Ok, there is a shop just near our plot. But everything is so expensive. Even the basic items cost more than I have. I got it, time for more mining. Come on, my three Gidra coins, we are leaving. What's this? A car? Oh, and it's mine. Nice. Yeah, parking never was one of my strengths. Here we can find some automated machines, which should theoretically do the mining and cleaning job for me. But they require almost 800 coins in total. Yes, 3 Hydra coins, we are probably not that welcome here as well. Alright, I've spent some time mining and now we have a bit more ores. Time to sell them. Looks like it's still not too much, only 94, but I have a plan. By the way, these glowing shards are not sellable, what a pity. So, the plan is to get money from fishing. Can I simply run away with that? I guess the answer is no. Fine, I'll buy it then. This fishing rod costs only 52 coins. Let's see how much we can get in return. The fishing itself is pretty straightforward. Left click, wait, left click, repeat. One fish in approximately 10 seconds. Let's check how much this baby worth. 6 coins from one fish? My first ore cost half of that. I think I can optimize all that by using something like bucket or cart. Yeah, much better. All that remains is a bit more patience and... Well, it definitely took some time, but I have a positive feeling. My car has the same feeling, as the game started lagging when I picked it up. Nevertheless, let's proceed to Jeveler. By the way, why does Jeveler accept fish? Fish I Jeveler? So many questions, so few answers. Hmm, I realized that it's not an easy task to place a cart on a table. Fortunately, this game does not block this action if you throw a cart in the midair. Almost. Just a few more tries. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Perfect landing. And a jackpot. Almost 40 hundreds. Now we are rich! Time to buy toys for the big boys! Damn it! Only one is available, others should be crafted. Oh yes, a sound of expensive buy! And as with all expensive things, you should also buy related products. In our case, a whole pipe system, as these machines are working on water. This should be enough. Oh, and one bed, please. 
perfect. Surprisingly, it works. The main problem is that one machine produces dirt chunks, while the other one converts them into valuables, and ideally they should come from the top. But do not worry, I have an idea. But before that, I need to get this pole from the glass I found nearby. The shrimp icon to the left explains what specifically I should find. According to latest researches, shrimps are hiding in dark places. And I have this big hole in my plot. Piece of cake. Don't believe me? Alright, let me pick up a shovel and dig a random hole. See? Still don't believe me? Alright. Remember a well near the jeweler? Take a closer look. Yeah, as expected. Here, Mr. Fishpan, you can take all three I found. Hmm, seems like one is enough. And the icon had changed. And the pole is free from the box. Oh, but now there is another one. I want this one now. Getting a second fish is a bit harder, as you need to prepare and simulate a perfect scene. Do you remember a Lion King scene with Rafiki and High Rock? Let's do it. But I don't have a Leon Pup. But I have a shoe. Worth a try. Look, you are a shoe king now. Oops. It worked. I knew it. Pole number three. Now you are free. Okay, returning to our mining idea. It's just about time to go to another city. According to this map, there is a settlement called Bridgepoor, where we can find more stuff for our automation. To get there, we will ride our car, pass a bridge, then some icy hills, and here we are. Let's run through our shopping list. Conveyor belts, checked. Grinding wheel, anvil, furnace, crucible, blacksmith hammer. Checked. Looks like the only condition for any item to be considered as parked into a truck is having any part of it lying on the truck. This conveyor belt is confirming this. Alright, time to go home and begin the real automation. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing you to the magnet on a stick. What is it? It's a magnet. On a stick. Literally. What's its purpose? Well, this. Or this. Or even this. Oh, and what is this? A subscribe button. What if I press it? Excellent, with all that I will be able to make even more content. Awesome, isn't it? Now we can even repair a broken miner. And optimize our chain a bit. Now that's what I call automation. Everything is running on its own, dropping the horse right into our cart. Let's just ignore the floating horse, it's just magic. And all that is solved by multiple conveyor belts. Nice. Time to sell everything we mined so far by transporting our cart and... What's up? No cart, no! This huge thing should stay. Bad cart, bad. And half of ours are still there. Alright, a magnet on a stick, help me. Why do you magnetize car? <sighs> I think we should make ingots instead, or jewelry, or swords. Maybe I can smelt something here. Okay, if I put some ores inside crucible and melt them in a furnace, then... Yeah, it worked! Mom, look, I'm a blacksmith! Hit this ore a bit, so it becomes red. Put it on the anvil together with some gem and smash it. Yay, look, mama, I'm a jeweler as well. Easy. Easy. Perfect. Almost 1800. Second round. Uh oh. Houston, we have a problem. Our car is behaving strange. It's moving slow and with brakes. But reverse is faster, for some reason. Fine, I can drive like that as well. As I can see, necklace requires two ingots and one gem, but it is probably more expensive. I mean... And one sword, please. 
Look what I found. This is Ice Helm, added recently in 2.0 patch. Looks like it has some new features, including transportation of items in these conveyors. According to this picture, you can place them right into a car. Let's take a look what's inside. An elevator. A huge bridge, a lot of lava, and Dwarven Forge. With explanation how to use it. Also in the shop nearby there are multiple statues which are required to create more miners and resources needed. I assume grey is iron and orange is clothium. This means only one thing. We need a lot of resources. Here we go, this should be enough to craft one miner. Can I simply put iron bar here and pull a lever? Yes, I can! Fantastic! Can I now simply send it to a car using this belt? Sure! Awesome! And looks like there's my change! Nice. I repeated the same three times, so all three miners are in the car ready to transport. Well, kinda. Now yes. Let's not think too much about this. Now we need to buy some more pipes and... Hey, where's my car? How did it even get there? Alright, it's descending. Almost there. Time to jump in. Whoa, help! I think I'll reload. Thank god it helped. Alright, time for big update. Three miners are definitely not enough, so I added a bit more. How many? I don't know, maybe 10? Let's check. Oh, this was a bad idea. I'll need some more conveyors and... What's happening with you today? Nevertheless, this should be enough for some small base adjustments. Well, I upgraded the starting plot, but it got stuck with strange gold entity levitating above Smelter. If you're asking me why the picture is changing so slow, that's not me. What the hell? Gold is everywhere! It even reached the nearest place! Ok, I don't want to clean all that, so time to move to a new place. Luckily we have enough money now. So we can easily buy this beautiful plot. And as digging deep gives us more resources, I have a plan. Which requires a lot of these babies. The mechanism is simple. You put a nuke, then you install a detonator, and... Yeah, simple as that. And this saves us a lot of time spent on digging. Continue going down. Then we can use a pickaxe to prepare a hole for our new base and... Alright, the final stitch. It took a while, but now we can observe the new base. Remember our perspective lessons? Time to wrap up what we've learned. From the first glance this mining place is mm, just a mining place. But if you look from a different angle, you'll see... A later! Then all dirt chunks get collected and go in a separate lines so upwards and upwards and upwards where they get into harvester. 
looks simple, but if you look from the right angle, you'll see four. From this point we add an extra spice with magnets, which transports the resources to the top, where they get sorted and go into different directions. But from different angle? Yeah, it's G! All ores go into smelters on a separate lines. There is also one line for onyx. And you can enjoy the smelting sound in a nice blacksmith house. Nice. As for other games, they are going in the separate lines right through these gates and then into the pits. How many of them? Well, 500 each at the moment. There is a purpose for that, but we'll need to wait a bit. Well, it's been a while, but now the number is slightly greater. Time to a final review on our home. Here we can find our pride. Axes, swords, rings and necklaces worth 1 million Hydra coins each. On the other side we can find all fishing rods. Oh yes, flashback is coming. Yes, yes, it was not an easy task to catch that lobster, but we finally made it. Time for real fishing like a pro. Nah, I lost my interest. Alright, what's next? Uh, where was I? Ah yes, the house. This is a room for all stuff required for producing our valuables, bars and ingots. Hmm, ingots. Uh oh, another flashback. Oh, look at Warren Forge. Can I craft this thingy here? Alright, do you accept Visa, Mastercard or Clotium bars? Of course you do. Can I put iron ore inside as well? Oh, I don't think so. Wait, will everything jump on this plate? Only one way to find out. Alright, I'm back. Looks like it returned to fishing rods. Never mind. So, you might ask me, Andrew, but why do you need over 30,000 gems? And I'll answer. To have a glowing treasury. You know, it's so nice to return from hard work, sit on your throne near the stone and look on 30,000 gems glowing under the sun. Nice. By all means, we definitely achieved what we were aiming for. The only thing that remains is to celebrate that by destroying everything. We can use several bombs, I guess. Or a bit more bombs. Yeah, enough is enough. Next time we will aim for more, so see you later.